Now, we've talked a lot about how the coalition is inching towards a pro-nuclear policy. Hinting today it'll be part of their election platform for next election. I've always said it will be. A little earlier, I caught up with the Shadow Climate Change and Energy Minister, Ted O'Brien, who explained the coalition's coal-to-nuclear plan. Well, great to be with you again, Chris, and there's no doubt that our assessment into Australia's next energy policy is well underway. And we've been pretty upfront, as you know, from the get-go, that we need to have every single possible technology on the table. Or as the Americans call it, and I love this phrase, um, all of the above. So if we're to decarbonise the Australian economy, we need all of the above to be considered, and that includes next generation zero emissions nuclear energy. Um, and so we've continued that uh, very public conversation. We've been very open, very transparent. And one of the things that really um, caught my attention when I was in the US and Canada earlier this year was what they are doing to, to move from retired coal plants into next generation nuclear technology. And in particular, the state of Wyoming, which is a, a very proud coal state um, that's been very reliant on coal-fired power stations, they've made the decision not to get rid of coal, but as coal plants retire, they've looked at the options ahead of them and they've made the decision that um, they want to move towards nuclear energy. So they are then having that, that transformation, if you like, from coal to nuclear over time. It makes so much sense. And in Australia, the obvious locations for this sort of transition are the Hunter Valley in New South Wales and the La Trobe Valley in Victoria. You have water there, of course, for cooling and for steam in these plants. You have a workforce that's going to be available, especially if coal closes down. And most importantly, you have all the transmission in the, the transmission lines in place already so you can get the power out to where it's needed without any additional costs. Uh, Chris, you, look, you're spot on with some of those general specs which are required. And we, we again, have learnt this from overseas and we have to keep learning the lessons from overseas. There's a reason why countries like Canada, in particular um, the province of Ontario, um, has such cheap electricity. Um, they've done this many years ago. They were very coal reliant and then eventually as they retired those plants, they went into nuclear. And it's why Wyoming are doing the same, Poland's doing the same, you know, Switzerland, France, we know a long-standing nuclear. So they're driven partly by the need to reduce emissions, but secondly, they need affordability, it needs to be cheap. And you'll see those who oppose nuclear will always run this absolute rot argument that it's too expensive, uh, forgetting that all of these countries do it to get costs down. The question we now have for Australia is, is this something we should be considering in those communities that really understand energy. And that's the question that, that we continue to put and we continue that dialogue. Well, of course, Australia should look at this. Not only is it cleaner, it's also safer. All the statistics would show us. But let's have a look at the scare you're going to confront. Here's the Climate and Energy Minister, Chris Bowen, in Parliament today. Nuclear energy is going to be a centrepiece, a centrepiece, Mr Speaker, <laughs> of the Coalition's 2025 energy policy. Now, we look forward to Never this centrepiece. New England will we cease ejecting. We look forward to the costings and to the locations of the nuclear power stations. Well, you've already talked about cost, Ted. You've got to make sure this uh, stacks up economically. But how do you counter this not-in-my-backyard proposition? Labor will try and target wherever you talk about this. They'll try and create a scare about it. Chris, there's absolutely no doubt, but I do think when people see those sort of antics coming out of the parliament, um, look, you can play to the, your back bench and get little giggles and all those sorts of things, but for the everyday Australian who happens to tune into parliament or sees clips like that, uh, they're struggling right now because Labor has failed. Their energy and climate policy is in tatters and Australians are paying the price. Um, and this is why we're doing the hard work, Chris. I, I think, you know, that the, the negative campaign, which will inevitably come, and you'll have the childish, not in my backyard stuff, all that sort of thing will inevitably come. But this is why the coalition hasn't jumped at this. We have been doing this so comprehensively, and we've been doing it with a degree of humility too, to say, you know what, other countries understand this technology. Um, they use nuclear not as the be-all and end-all, 
but as part of a diversified mix. How are they doing it? Um, for, for their economics will stack up. And this is the work we're doing now, so yep. that if the coalition does decide to take a, a clean energy policy to the next elec election, including next generation nuclear, uh, we, we'll have the answers. Um, but yep. again, we're in the process and uh, we're being open with the Australian people, which is why Peter Dutton uh, is speaking openly about it, uh, as am I, and other yeah. colleagues, by the way. It's absolutely the right uh, discussion and debate and research to be doing. I look forward to your policy come election time. Thanks for joining us, Ted. Thanks very much, Chris.